This conference will now be recorded. Hey, so good morning again, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, here online with us and in person for those of you who are here with us in person. Um, and thank you to Exchange Bank for sponsoring this series, this year's series of the Finance Administration uh, Chamber Councils for 2021. With this first session, we're joined by Bob Tatton and Slur and Dana uh, to speak on networking and cybersecurity for your business. Uh, but first and foremost, let's let our sponsor say a few words. Uh, Catherine, if you want to kick it off and say a few words. Hi, I'm Catherine Martin with Exchange Bank. We're glad to sponsor this today. We, uh, financial education is one of our uh, biggest things that we like to do, and this is just what we consider a part of it. Um, we're a full service bank. We specialize in all commercial loans, lending, any commercial services, consumer services. So come see us if you haven't. We'd love to get to know you and love to have your business. Now I'm going to turn it over to Bob Guyton with Southern Data. Um, he does a lot of our computer work for us, and he's very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. Thank you all for coming today. Welcome, everybody. And uh, I've got uh, Leslie Hall is new to Southern Data. She's uh, helping with some business development. So uh, hopefully the next time we do one of these, she'll be presenting and not me. Uh, Brandy, if sometimes I my voice goes quiet, so if you can't hear me, let me know. And you too, Mike. Um, and again, thank you for Exchange Bank for asking me to be here. I guess we've worked with Alan for over 20 years now. And uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about, I could tell an Alan he could teach this because the banks were really ahead of the curve as far as security and stuff. They were security aware you know, before a lot of businesses were. And uh, at each place, uh, you've got a jump drive with this presentation on it and some other helpful information. And if you're joining by the uh, virtually, then uh, if you'll pop us an email or something at southerndata.com, we'll, uh, we'll get you a, a jump drive uh, in your hand with the information on it if you'd like to have it in. And there's some other security information on there. Um, so with all that being said, we'll get started here. Um, wait, wait a minute, somebody turned it on. No. There we go. All right. I'm going to do the James fan. I'm getting warm already. So I'm to take my shirt off. Y'all know the food are getting bad. Um, passwords. Um, good grief. You know, back in the old days, we used to use a password, your dog's name or whatever. We've come a long way from that. Passwords need to be at least eight characters. They need to have letters, numbers, and at least one special character. And, uh, you know, really, you shouldn't use a word or like your pet's name or your wife's name or husband's name or whatever. And you really ought to ch change your passwords once a month. And you never email passwords or give passwords out and you don't have them written. You'd be amazed at the time we've gone into a place and pick up their keyboard, look on the, under the keyboard and they'll have their password and we can get into their system with that, which we're getting in there to fix it, not to mess with it. So, uh, and you should also set your computer if you walk away for it to uh, go to sleep or to uh, put the screensaver on so somebody, if you're gone out of the room, somebody can't just sit down at your computer and start working. Um, here's uh, an example of not a good password. So uh, you wouldn't want to make your password incorrect. So whenever you type it wrong, it'll say your password's incorrect. That's humorous, by the way, Brandy. <laughs> okay, inbound phone calls. We've we said that and said that, and then it look, every day something happens. Um, you know, somebody takes a phone call, lets somebody take over their computer, and they either wreak havoc on their information, or uh, just within the last 90 days, uh, there's a CFO of a company that let somebody log into their computer and then realize that they blanked the screen, realized what it was. Well, they did have sense enough to turn the computer off and call us. And we went up there 
And the first thing, she had a spreadsheet on her desktop called Passwords, which that is a no-no. And it's like, what do you do? You know, they got multiple bank accounts. I said, you start with the first one, most it start changing every one of those passwords. You don't know if they got that information or not. So anybody ever calls you, you never let them take over your computer unless you're absolutely sure you know who you're talking to. And if there is a question for whatever reason, you know, you could always say, let me call you back and call them back. But when in doubt, it's, it's better off not to talk to them. Um, email, uh, and, and here again, it happens every day. Um, you get an email from your financial institution, from EXBA or whoever, and uh, you click on it and all of a sudden you've either got a virus or somebody's taking over your computer. So the best thing to do, if I get an email from a gang bank that says, you know, one of my uh, accounts has uh, had some money, uh, automatic draft or something, and I want to verify it, I don't click on the email. I close the email and go to EXBA.com and log in. And then I can look at it. So as I know where I'm going when I go to that website, I'd never click on an email from a vendor. Or if I get one from uh, Microsoft or whatever, I'll go to Microsoft.com, log into my account, look at it. I mean, it's, you know, when in doubt, don't click on an email. Um, web browsing. If you're web browsing uh, and, and you get a pop-up and it says call here or this or that, the best thing to do is hit that power button and let it shut down. And bring it back up and scan it. Uh, um, scan it with your antivirus. Um, oh, and then uh, I was going to mention too, like uh, like I know a friend of mine has a, had a live mail account address. Well, they googled live mail support. Well, I could go make a website that I'm live mail support and ended up calling somebody and then they were wanting $300 or something and realized that, you know, there is no, it's only third parties are supporting these free email accounts because they're free email accounts. So there's no tech support. So it's really better to stay away from those free email accounts also. Okay, antivirus. Um, antivirus. Uh, you need to make sure you have a paid antivirus that's up to date and, and, and ideally one that protect, protects against uh, ransomware. And uh, if you get an attachment and you think it's legitimate and like a, a Word document or something, the best thing to do is save it on your computer and then you can usually, depending on your antivirus, you could right click on it and scan that file with your antivirus to verify that it's not a, a virus. All right, back up business continuity. All right, according to uh, Gartner, Forrester, and Pricewater Research, 25% of machines will have some kind of failure this year. 24% say they've experienced a full data disaster. 70% of small businesses that experience a data disaster go out of business within a year and the older your equipment the higher your risk um, and then also depending on your industry uh, there again i uh, refer to the banking industry uh, i mean for a long time they've had security audits like years ago uh, and now you've got hipaa and then you've got all the government agencies all those uh, there's different regulatory agencies for your industry. So you need to know the laws in your industry and make sure you're complying to the proper uh, uh, laws that affect your industry. Um, so you need to understand your infrastructure, risk and options, purchase approach, verify and test. All right, things used to be simple, desktops and servers. Then it got complicated. Um, you got cloud servers, virtual servers, desktops, physical servers, SAS applications, um, and then you've got the uh, mobile devices. Um, you know what SAS stands for, Catherine? Software as a service. That's a new acronym that's fairly new. So if you're paying a cloud service fee to a software, they, a software as a service. 
Um, because <clears throat> now your data is everywhere, workstation servers, mobile devices, removable devices, uh, again, SAS applications and public clouds. Makes you nervous, doesn't it, Alan? <laughs> Uh, every employee creates, creates data and data is increasing every day and business data is traveling everywhere. All right, uh, now data loss prevention is not downtime prevention. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, there are systems available that fell over so you don't even have downtime and depending on you know, what's it gonna cost you to be down? You need to consider systems that prevent downtime. Um, so basically you've got a uh, image base where it's snapshotting the whole image of the server or whatever you're running. So it could be spun up or restored back within minutes instead of hours. If you have a file-based system, it backs up the data files, but if you have a a server crash or whatever, then you got to load the application or restore the data. So you could be down one day, two days. I mean, it just depends on how long you get it all restored back. And so here's a little comparison of uh, business continuity plus versus just a backup. So you need to know if your system is a business continuity system or if it's a backup system. And guess what? Southern Data has business continuity available. Just throw that out there. Um, oh, how many articles have we read lately on the news about somebody getting their uh, information encrypted? Madison County Schools, the kids were out of school for, I don't know, I think at least a week, maybe longer. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, you, you read them every day and that's, uh, so you need to be aware of that and have systems in, in uh, place to, uh, uh, you know, prevent or reduce the, the uh, you know, the possibility of your data getting encrypted. Um, cost of disasters, operation stop, lost sales, compliance penalties, missed deadlines, data loss, potential litigation, permanent damage to your reputation. So, I mean, it's serious business, the, the security on your network and to protect your data and information. <clears throat> um, of course, have a realistic budget. And there's uh, different budget calculators you can go out and figure what is it really costing me if the bank was down for three days what's it going to cost me if if uh, this doctor's office over here they're seeing you know 100 patients a day a bunch of doctors in there i mean if they're down one or two days what's that costing me you know that needs to be considered uh, how long does it take to restore from a disaster hours minutes seconds uh, what's it going to cost? What there again? I just covered what's what's the cost of a day of you being down? And then uh, we've all heard garbage in, garbage out. You need to verify and test whatever systems you're using. And uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, trust and verify. Um, so what are we taking away? Lo local backup, cloud backup. Can you quickly virtualize your structure? Uh, you gotta have a trusted service provider, test your systems and in, ensure that you can recover from a disaster, you know, quickly. Um, in 2018, uh, Alabama was the 49th state to pass uh, a data breach law. And um, if you have uh, data breached, then by law now, a certain number of records, you're required to report to every one of those individuals, which can be very costly. And you also have to report it to the, uh, uh, the state of Alabama. And uh, so you need to be aware of the, uh, whoever does your legal advice or whatever is aware of that data breach law. Of course, the ideal thing is don't ever have your data breach. I don't know if y'all remember, several years ago, Target had a breach at Christmas and didn't tell anybody and ended up getting in a bunch of lawsuits because of it. And, uh, um, you know, cause they didn't report it and didn't tell anybody cause they was right at Christmas and they didn't want to lose that business. Uh, how can a breach occur? Phishing emails, spyware, spamming, or just people getting involved. Uh, all right. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about email. If you'll look 
Uh, well, let's go to the next slide because it say right there, and that says U.S. Bank, but the, the email address it's coming from, that's not the bank's email address. You can tell by looking at that. So that's a phishing email. So you definitely want to delete that one. And then Walmart, well, right there, that's coming from bonusspecialinfo.com. That is not coming from walmart.com, but they've spoofed their logo and everything. And you could also move your pointer over a link I don't think that, yeah, that won't show up. Ooh. Okay. Weak security measures, Wi-Fi, uh, bring your own device, physical access. That's another way people get in. Uh, like uh, you should have a firewall, you should have your patches and if you're letting people bring devices onto your system you need to make sure they have proper antivirus and proper protection on them and uh, you should ask give people permissions based on their job function you don't just give everybody access to everything okay so yeah outdated systems open ports uh is a way people can get into systems and there are services we use a third party to scan our bigger networks and for example there was a, a network where someone had set up a camera system uh, and they had just left like the default password in the dvr accessed out from the internet so somebody happened to know they're scanning and fishing and ran across that and they could have possibly logged into that through the camera system and gotten into the network so there's companies that will scan that and give a, give the information because it was actually our network. We'll see, we didn't put the, that particular camera system in. So that was a vulnerability that a third party created. So you need to know all the third parties that are coming into your business also. Um, and, and again, outdated software, which uh, uh, as we know, Windows 7 has gone away, uh, Windows, eight xp has been gone so basically you've got if you're using the windows based system you've got windows 10 is what you need to have and make sure you've got all your updates done all right vendor management who's accessing your network we we fight that battle at some doctor's office because they'll have a somebody logging in like from uh, the x-ray company or whatever and maybe there's some concerns about the password or what else they have access to so if people are logging into your system from the outside vendors you need to have a vendor access agreement with all your vendors if you're letting them log into your network to do any kind of work or maintenance or anything okay and again talking about the you should have a business associates agreement with your vendors that are coming into your network. I had to protect myself, be diligent, adaptive, and comprehensive, you know, check your systems and verify. And don't stick your head in the sand. All right, any questions? I love that line. That's about right. I figured about 30 minutes is all y'all gonna hear me talk. Any questions? I have a question. Like I said, don't store your passwords on your keyboard or you know, Excel spreadsheet on your desktop. What's a good way to store a password? Where is it? You know, use your phone, for example, or well, there's some there's some apps that are specifically for that. Is a good way to do it. Uh, of course, the best way is just have them in your head, but sometimes that's not feasible if you were going if you're gonna have them on a file on your computer you'd want to make sure it had a password on it and uh and then also you know don't call it passwords and then there again make sure you keep your your password to your computer you know where it's not written down anywhere you just really need to remember that all right uh who knows what uh All right, if, you, if you're browsing the internet, I'm gonna ask y'all a question and whoever answers first might get a prize. If you're browsing the internet and uh, all of a sudden it pops up and burr, burr, call this number, whatever, what do you do? 
All right, any other questions? And if any of you folks uh, watching the line, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and put those in the chat if you'd like to as well. They're all asleep. All right. Well, I'm done. <laughs> Um, Christy Moe answered it just late. She said the answer was call Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Christy, Christy Mayo. You know, oh. Like. Well, if we don't have any more questions or comments, uh, we'll go ahead and cut the session off and stop the recording then.